Good morning everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is so exciting for booktubers or book tuber watchers. Today we are going to be discussing all the books I read in 2022. I will say I do have a part one to this video. I would recommend watching that one first and then coming back to this video. I did that like mid-July um, so that has the first half of the year's books and then this video will just like conclude it out. I didn't want to be too overwhelmed when doing it. Um, but yeah, we're going to be discussing if I met my reading goal, the page count, um, story graph stats, and things like that. So without further ado, let's hop into it. I literally just pulled them and I'm using story graph because I really love their graphics on here. So first we're going to actually going to go through my stats. So for 2022, my reading goal was 75 books and I actually read 157. So that is 209% completed um and then my page goal is this was the first time i did a page goal because goodreads doesn't have this option as as far as i'm concerned um and so i set it to 40,000 pages which i feel like is pretty good because i got 58,681 pages which is 147 percent exceeded my reading goal by 82 books and then exceeded my page goal by 18,681 pages why i love story graph so much it's amazing so we have our moods here our moods first which it looks like the one that i read the most is emotional which is actually kind of funny the next one is lighthearted. so those are like the contrasting but those are like the two that i read the most and then i have adventurous i have adventurous reflective dark funny mysterious tense sad informative hopeful challenging and then aspiring i want to know what's dark that i've read 31 books Oh, they're counting Sarah J. Mass. Huh, okay. They're counting a lot of like different types of books, but. Okay, anyways, moving on. The next one we have is our pace and our page number. So for my pace, I read 55, or I read 55% of medium paced books. And then my second that I read the most was fast paced books. And then in last place is slow. Although fast and slow are pretty, pretty close together. And then for page numbers, it looks like my range is from, it's like my most read books typically fall in the 300 page count to 499. Um, and then I read more, less than 300 pages than I do over 500 pages. My nonfiction and fiction breakdown is 92% fiction and 8% nonfiction. My goal is typically to read at least one nonfiction per month. So that would be 12 books and I have 12 books. So I feel like that's pretty good. I read 12 nonfiction um, this year. So a surprise by this at all is my top two are romance and then contemporary. And then I have young adult, fantasy, and then literary, which I just, I feel like that makes a lot of sense. I have a lot of different genres on here, but I knew romance contemporary and fantasy would be up there. I'm honestly shocked that young adult is above fantasy, but I think that's because Throne of Glass is considered young adult and same with like Shadow and Bone and Crows. Um, like those are fantasy, but they're also considered young adult. So I think that plays a role in there, but yeah. I'm gonna talk about my format because when I, when I talk, when I put a book in, I never like change the edition, which that is one of my reading goals for 2023 is to go ahead and make sure I'm putting the right format on there. So please hold me accountable. I can't talk about my most read authors, which again, not shocked at all by this. Colleen Hoover, I was trying to read her entire backlist. And I think I did it. I think the only books I have is there's two like um, collection of stories and I don't even think Colleen has a book in there, but she like helped publish it. And then she co-wrote um, two books, I think, with another author. So I've read all of Colleen Hoover's like actual, her own books. And honestly, I don't know if I'll, I, I, Colleen Hoover is such like an interesting person that I, I don't know, we'll see, we'll see. But anyways, I'm not shocked by her being at the top. And then Sarah J Maas as the second because I did read Throne of Glass this year. And then JK Rowling because I read um, Harry Potter for the first time in January. And then yeah, we have a few other authors. One is number of books and pages per month. So it looks like my highest, oh gosh, which one? I guess, oh my gosh, I only read two books in August. So it's so low. Um, and it looks like my best month was actually November for books read. But for pages read, it looks like June was best because I think that's when I was reading Throne of Class. 
yeah that is kind of crazy anyways oh i'm so embarrassed by this my average rating is 4.08 and people are like oh no that's good that means you're reading really good books no that means i'm a really bad like star rater i just give everything five stars if i love it which i guess that's my own like i'm writing the books so i should write it how i want but this is another one of my reading goals for 2023 is that i don't want to i like actually want to be critical with my stars so another another thing to hold me accountable with we get into the little book since i've already discussed two of my reading goals i'm going to go ahead and hit you with the third one which is just how many books i want to read and the page count i think i'm going to leave my book um count to 100 books i really want to accomplish that i've read over 100 books for the past two years so i feel like it's okay to set it at 100. the reason i set it at 75 this year is because i thought i had a fluke year in 2021 but it just looks like i read a lot so we're gonna set it at 100 books and i think we're just gonna set the the page count at 50,000. i feel like that's okay i feel like the that page count to the books is equivalent maybe not i don't know um yeah anyways let's jump into the books i will say i have it I, I tried to watch my video that I published in July, but it was hard for me because I didn't go in order. So I don't really know if I'm forgetting books on my like completed 2022 what I read. So sorry if that happens, but if you really want to know, like if I was 100% accurate with telling you guys every book I read, just go look at my Goodreads or Storygraph. I have them linked down below so you can friend me. I love like seeing people's updates and things like that. So um, that's just a little disclaimer, but we're just going to scroll that way. I make sure that I get all the books. Um, as you can see, I pulled these all from my shelves. So we are just going to dive in. The book I have is actually one I don't physically own. This one took the world by storm and that is things we never got over by Lucy score. This one was very popular. I rated it four stars. Next we have Cersei, which I rated five stars. This book is one that we're I would like 100% recommend. I personally liked it more than Song of Achilles. Um, it was beautiful. I annotated it and I actually have a video of me reading this and annotating it if you want to watch. But again, like this book was fantastic. I can't wait to read um, the other Madeline Miller pieces of work coming soon. And we have Women by Chloe Caldwell. I had no idea what this book was. I just saw it in the UK. I think I was in Oxford when I bought this one and I was like, you know what? I really want to read this. And so I picked it up. I ended up rating it three stars because it was just a fun little literary fiction novel. And it talks about like an abusive situation between two women in a relationship. So yeah, it was very it was very interesting that's all i can say i think i read it in one sitting along the same themes of like really short books i read la woman by eve babbitts this was my second um piece of work by eve and i actually rated this one three stars i did like sex and rage more but it was a fun little book if you ever need a book to like complete your um goodreads goal here you go next we have one of my favorite romances that i read this year and that is the no show by beth leary i rated this five stars i did not see the plot twist second novel by beth leary and yeah i just really liked it i liked all the girls i liked the guy ah, i would recommend it all of these books are most of them are books that i'm going to recommend so i should probably stop saying that um but it's fine it's fine we have every summer after by carly fortune or Fort fortune i don't even know i'm sorry every time i say her name i'm always like I don't know um i rated this five stars it really reminded me of love in other words i think everybody knows that that it's literally the story um but it's a little bit different i love the setting it was such a good beach read and i kind of want to read it again i might read it in the summer because it was just it was beautiful i love second chance friends to lovers that trope this book and love in other words do it so well i love it these two are kind of funny i have the third and fourth book from the ice planet barbarian series I rated these both three stars every book that i've read from this series i've rated three stars i'm gonna continue reading it because i think it's fun i think it is so different than anything else and i will say there is science fiction in here i know the stigma around these and the stigma is very true but also the sci-fi is there and i really enjoy it and i love that they're redoing the covers because i'm just gonna buy the new covers and i think the fifth book is coming out in the new year um but yeah both of these three stars i still think my favorite one is I think it's liz i think i think that's um the second one i still think that one's my favorite but i'm not sure i also have reading blogs for this entire series if you want to watch that um but yeah three stars this is another one that got pretty popular over um the summer and that is the roughest draft by austin Sy 
Oh. I didn't even know this was written by a man. Oh my gosh, it's written by a woman and a man. They co-wrote this, which is crazy because that's exactly what this book is about. I don't know who just dropped something really heavy right above my head, but it's fine. I don't know why I didn't realize that, or maybe he didn't, just forgot. But anyways, this book was four stars for me. I thought it was cute. I actually read it in the pool, which is funny because they're in a pool on the cover. Um, but yeah, good four star summer beach read. We have the entire Simple Wild series. I don't know if there's going to be any books in the series. All I know is that this book was fantastic. Um, in the first like three books, it follows the same character, Kala, and then this one follows a side character called Running Wild. And I thought all of them were good. I really sympathize with Kala. Fantastic. I think these are such good reads. Read them in the winter, honestly. I wish I... I read them in the summer, but I also think they would be really good winter books because they're set in Alaska and it's just so good. I 100% would recommend, if I didn't say already, all five were five, or all four were five stars. What I have is A Heartbreaking Work of Staggering Genius by Dave Eggers. This is a memoir type book, I think. I rated it two and a half stars. I didn't really relate to him, which when you're reading a nonfiction book about somebody's life, there has to be some sort of relatability for you to actually enjoy it. Um, and I know there's a whole thing of like not rating people's memoirs because it's like them telling about your life and you shouldn't really rate that. Um, but my overall reading experience was two and a half stars. I could have DNF'd it, but I didn't. And so, yeah, I, I do think it was good, but like, again, probably won't read anywhere anywhere in the near future. Next, we're gonna talk about the From Blood and Ash series. I have the first four books. I think that's all that's published right now. I'm pretty sure there's gonna be a total of six books though. And yeah, I rated the first two books five stars. I thought they were fantastic. I couldn't stop reading them, like literally could not put these down. They were amazing. I loved it. It was so good. And then I got to the third book and I was like, oh, what, what is this? What is, what is this? But I still pushed through and I think I rated it three stars. And then I got to this book. And first off, this book is bigger than the others, which I don't understand. I bought them all from the same place. But anyways, that's besides the point. War of Two Queens was just like not what I wanted. And I think I rated it three or two stars, not the best. I I'm gonna finish out the series because I just, I've already read more than half of it. And so, yeah. If, it, if the vibes were just the same as the first two, I would, this would be a five star series, but it's just, it's just not. So we're gonna talk about the Slam series from Colleen Hoover. I had this whole thing and I even said it in the first part to this video where I was like, I rate all Colleen Hoover books five stars. I don't even care if they're actually two stars, but it was this series where I was like, no, no, they are not five stars. So I did rate the first book five stars, but I'm just like the relationship between the two characters, like it isn't right. And then I rated Point of Retreat and This Girl both three stars. I don't know. This just, this wasn't for me. I think it was one of Colleen's first series. So like it makes sense why the writing wasn't as good as I, as her other books. But yeah, this, this one was like probably a three star average rating altogether. Flicker in the Dark. I rated this one at four stars. It was a fiction thriller. I actually listened to it on audiobook and I thought it was super good. Um, if you're looking for a thriller mystery novel, I would 100% recommend that one. It was great. Do you want up here? Oh, there you go. Lay down. Oh, you want to sit on my lap? Vincent decided he wants to sit on my lap. So this is actually another Colleen Hoover. This I read over the summer and I did rate this one five stars. Um, honestly, this one is probably one of my least favorites. It wasn't that good like at all. But at the time I was like, Ugh, five, five stars. But I don't know why he's trying to sit on my lap. It's like such an uncomfortable position. But anyways, yeah. We have another, or no, this is actually the first classic of this video, I think. And that is The Coquette by Hannah W. Faster. I think this was actually the first or second published novel in the established United States. I, I could be wrong on that, but there was something like that. And this is just... It was really good. It was like a critique on how women are supposed to be viewed, but it was also based off of the true story, which I thought was really interesting. I ended up rating this one at three stars just because it wasn't my favorite classic, but it was a good read and I would recommend it. Purple Hearts because I watched the movie on Netflix and I ended up rating the book two and a half stars. It wasn't my favorite. Probably won't read it again, but I'm glad I read it just to at least say I've read it and experienced it. I read Light Lark, which this received a lot of criticism, but I actually really enjoyed it. I rated it four stars. I have a reading vlog on it 
And yeah, I'm super excited to see where the series goes. I thought it was a very fun and cool YA fantasy. And I have the inserts, which I just, I think they're so pretty. This is Celeste. And I'm just like, wow. I actually did guess the like plot twist, I guess. Um, so I wasn't shocked at the ending, except for one point. I guess one of the plot twists, but not one of the others. And yeah, anyways, this one was fun would recommend. Right, another classic and that is Edgar Allan Poe's The Narrative of Arthur Gordon Pym of Nantucket. This is the only novel that Poe ever wrote and I ended up rating it one and a half stars. Anybody who studies literature or English will know like agree with me on this unless well maybe not but it's just not it's not good. It's like Edgar Allan Poe tried to throw in every element that's ever existed in any gothic horror novel. Um, besides romance, there's really no romance in here. But at the end, there's like a critique on race, it looks like. But I don't know. It's just it's very interesting. It should be a one star, but I rated it one and a half just by how absurd it was. Um, it gained half a star for that. And yeah, um, I'm. Uh, it's one of those books where I'm like, I'm glad I've read it, but I, am I gonna read it again? Heck no. We have another classic and that is Clotel by William Wells Brown. Um, Clotel or the President's Daughter. So this is written from a freed slave and he talks about like the slave narrative and also kind of twists the story about Thomas Jefferson having children with his slaves. And I rated it um, three and a half stars. I thought it was really good. Um, I thought you got a lot of different perspectives and I thought that was very interesting. So I have The Wife Between Us. This is a thriller horror novel. It's three stars. I thought it was a good thriller, but I honestly guessed the plot twist and it just wasn't that shocking to me. So three stars. Next, I have the two bromance book club picks that I read this year. Both of these five stars. Can't wait to read the rest of the series. I, I know it's just going to be fantastic. I think they're so good. 100% would recommend it. One of my favorite romances of the year. So I have Love in the Time, A Serial Killers. I rated this one 3.25 stars. I thought it was a cute and unique romance, but it's like one of those that I'm probably not going to read again. Um, I thought it would be more of like a Halloween-y type of vibe, which it does have like some scary elements, but it's it's not necessarily a Halloween um, book. So three and a half, 3.25 stars. I really do like the cover though, it's so pretty. And then of course I read It Starts With Us by Colleen Hoover. I did rate this one five stars. I thought it was really good. I thought uh, those who are looking for like something that's like some sort of epic story, you're not gonna get it. It's an epilogue, it's an extended epilogue for Lily and Atlas, which I thought it was good. Like I said, five stars. I have a reading vlog for this if you want to watch it. We have a Lisa Jewell novel, The Family Upstairs. I rated this one two stars. It was my least favorite Lisa Jewell novel that I've read. I know there is a sequel to this called The Family Remains, I think. I don't read this again. It just wasn't my favorite. I will say I do have this one signed, which is pretty cool. Um, but... Okay, next we're going to talk about the Shadow and Bone and Six of Crows duology. So Shadow and Bone, I rated all three of these three stars. I thought it was good. I'm glad I read them. Um, I think it did establish some sort of like world building, character building for the Six of Crows duology. But yeah, these just like weren't my favorite. I honestly wish Alina had gone with the Darkling. Like honestly, I'm a Darkling stan. I don't even want to watch the show. I did watch it, but I was like... I thought it was so hot like when Alina and the Darkling like were together and then as soon as they stopped I just I wasn't interested. I'm sorry. I wanted her to turn bad. Okay? I did. I really did. He's back. I don't know what he's doing but anyways we have Six of Crows and <laughs> Crooked Kingdom which I rated four stars. I did like these a little bit more than the the Shadow and Bone trilogy. I loved Kaz. I'm sorry, some people find him annoying, but I loved him. I really did. I thought he was so interesting. That's where I think was my favorite character overall in the books and in the show. But yeah, these ones are thick. So if you're reading them, beware of that. Okay, next we have another classic, which is Walden by Thrill. Rated this 3.75 stars. I think this was I think this was my favorite classic I read in the second half of the year. Persuasion was my favorite in the first half. But yeah, I thought this was really good. It's a nonfiction book. And I don't know, it was just fantastic. You get this guy who's living in seclusion for two years and it's just so interesting. There's some really good points where I was just, I was highlighted in a way and yeah, I really liked it. I have notes on Heartbreak by Annie Lord. I read this at the end of October, I think. I rated it five stars, it was so good. I actually lent it to my friend Matthias because it's so good. Everybody, 
everybody needs to read it it's fantastic then we have the cheat sheet i know this was pretty popular and i rated it four stars i really liked sarah adams i actually read two books from her the Ed when in rome by this author as well which i rated three stars i did like this one a little bit more um but yeah it was cute it was like everything you want and like a cute little short romance and i think these are these are considered closed doors so you don't see any intimate scenes um yeah i liked it we have jeanette mccurdy's i'm glad my mom died i think this was my favorite nonfiction of the year as a lot of people this was their favorite and you know this was fantastic five stars have no words i actually listened to this on audiobook but i do own a copy thanks to my grandma Jeannie. but yeah next i want to talk about all the ali hazelwood books i read <laughs> this year i actually read love on the brain and then her three novellas um, under the like book loathe to love you and I think that's like she's gonna put them all together in a book that's coming out in January um, but you have below zero um, stuck with you and then under one roof and I rated all four of those things five stars Ali Hazelwood is a god in my opinion I love her American roommate experiment which this is the second book in the Spanish love deception little series it's not a series you don't have to read um, one or the other or both or whatever um, but I did like this one more than the Spanish love deception I rated it four stars I thought it was cute it was friends to lovers forced proximity I loved it. It was fun. I have If He Had Been With Me. I rated this 3.75 stars. I read this in November. I thought it was really good. Very emotional. Everybody loved it um, in the like the past few months and I would recommend it. It was pretty good. Of Lydia Bird rated this five stars. Again, I have read so many good romances this year and this is one of my favorites. I thought it was great. It was so emotional but also just so cute and I loved it. This one 3.75 stars. I thought it was good. I did like The Silent Patient more I think. I did guess the plot twist in this, so that's why it was rated a little bit lower. I liked the Greek mythology elements of it. Um, yeah, we have the last Colleen Hoover books of the year, I'm pretty sure, and that is the Maybe Someday series. My sister is currently reading Maybe Not, so I don't have that one on me, but I rated all of these. What did I rate it? I rated Maybe Someday two stars. I rated Maybe Not one and a half stars, and then I rated Maybe Now three stars so this this series was honestly like a two maybe a two star series it's my least favorite i didn't like i didn't like the tropes i thought some of the scenes were disturbing and also i hate that i got two different covers what is that what is that please tell me not that that's like literally their fault but anyways yeah meant to be mine by hannah ornstein i rated this two stars it wasn't my favorite honestly i thought it was bad this book, on the other hand, was a five-star read. I thought it was a great historical fiction, fictionary, or contemporary literary novel. Five stars, immediately. I still want to watch the show, so if you've watched it, let me know. I know somebody said that it has nothing to do with the book, really. Like, it's a completely different story. So I will keep that in consideration, but yeah, this this was so good. I couldn't stop reading it. Loved the found like family in this and it was it's just fantastic. This one is a collection of short stories and that is Fiona and Jane. I rated this one three and a half stars. I thought it was really good. I listened to it on audiobook while like following along and I loved how it was told in different perspectives and I really liked seeing two women who are figuring out sexuality, identity, things like that. I thought it was super good. Next we have American Psycho by Brett Brett Easton Ellis, which this is four stars. It was so disturbing. Like this is a horror novel. Like this is probably the most graphic book I've ever read in my life. And it was amazing. Like it was it was really well done, at least in my opinion. I really enjoyed it. Rated it four stars, like I said. Not rating it five stars because it's just this is like not you can't rate this five stars. I guess you can. Maybe I would, but it's just wow, like this is true horror right here. Right here. In this in this like four hundred page book insane this may or may not be my last um classic i'm not sure i think this is considered a classic it's the captivity of the omen girls among the apache and mojave indians rated this two stars i think the like story but how it was done who it was written by this guy is sexualizing a young girl's experience and like quieting her voice not using the correct like terms and things like that um so yeah probably a two-star book but like this actual story is really good about olive oatman like look her up uh read the book the girl with the blue tattoo yeah we have the ku common book for this year and that is disability visibility i rated this one at five stars so good there were other like essays i enjoyed in here other than 
or over other ones, but you're gonna get that in any collection of essays. Yeah, I think everybody should read it. It's very good. Into the Christmas romances. We have Susan Mallory's Home Sweet Christmas, rated this one three stars. Red Love Light Farms, rated that one four stars. I have Meet Me Under the Mistletoe, um, All I Want for Christmas, Once Upon a December, and then Just Like Magic that I all rated three stars. They were really fun. I just did a wrap up talking about these books, so that's why I'm not going in depth. But these were all three stars. I read One Day in December and One Last Gift. Um, this one by Emily Stone and then Josie Silver rated both of these four stars. Switching it up, I read Build Your House Around My Body. This is a Vietnamese horror magical realism novel and I rated it three stars. I thought it was pretty good. Um, it was kind of scary. There was like a motif around um, snakes or imagery or metaphor. I don't know. There was a lot about snakes in here. Makes sense because there's snakes on the cover, which this cover is stunning. I read Karen White's The Last Night in London. This one at three stars is pretty good. Um, little cute romance, dual point of view. Um, also, also like dual timelines. That's why you get the two point of views, but pretty good. Read and every morning the way home gets longer and longer. This was my first Frederick Backman, um, book it's actually a novella and i read it at five stars it was so it was so freaking good like read it please We're getting closer and closer to the end we have two penelope douglas novels um they are a very graphic author if you know you know i read both of these two stars i will say birthday girl is better than credence and just like the actual like literature realm um but credence has more you know so yeah two stars. Then we have The Cartographers um, by Ping Shepard. This is a thriller, kind of like magical realism, I think, um, book. And I rated this one three stars. I listened to it on audiobook while following along. And yeah, I just didn't really like the ending, which is why it's three stars. I think the last book, apart from my devotional, is Elin Heldebrand's 28 Summers, which I rated five stars. So we're ending the year with a five star book, which I feel like is fantastic. I'm very happy that it happened that way. But yeah, this one, I was a little nervous for it, reading a summer book in the winter. But like I said, five stars. I would recommend this one. Books I read, I didn't actually include my devotional in my Goodreads or Storygraph wrap up, and I probably won't, um, but yeah really had such a fun reading month or reading month what i did have several fun reading months but overall it was a great reading year and i can't wait to see what 2023 has another one of my reading goals this is the last one i think is to finish every book i have on my physical tbr i would like to set a goal where it's like i have to read my entire physical tbr before i buy another book but i just know that's not gonna happen i'm gonna be realistic here but it's okay if I buy books, but my goal is to literally finish every single book on my shelves that I have not read. Um, so yeah, that's the goal. Anyways, now I have to go put all these back, so wish me luck, and I will talk to you guys next time. I am filming this on the 31st, but I know it's coming out way later. So I hope everybody had a happy new year and had fun celebrating and um, ringing into the, the new year. Yeah, I just have like a really good feeling about 2023, which everybody says that when the new year is coming, but that's how I genuinely feel. Yeah, I will talk to you guys very soon. Thank you guys so much for all the support you gave me this year, and I can't wait to talk to you guys next time. Peace and love. Bye, guys.